You are now watching This Gal TV. Good afternoon and welcome to Fiscal TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jim Caselli. On today's show, we'll introduce you to Toquin Collier, the new Chief Information Officer of Fiscal. Ajita Nimkar will be here to bring you a procurement contract work center dem demo, and David Symbol will be here with some helpful FSC info. Let's start today's show off with Toquin Collier, the new Chief Information Officer of Fiscal. Toquin, thank you for joining us today and congratulations on becoming part of the Fiscal family. Thanks, Tim. Let's get started with a little bit of your background before you joined Fiscal. Tell us about it. Tim, I have been with the state for 23 years. I started as a student assistant at Franchise Tax Board and then joined the state as a programmer one once I graduated from Sac State. Um, I worked my way up from there, which has provided me with experience that many in many different areas in IT. My most recent job before Fiscals was the Chief Technology Officer for the Department of Healthcare Services. I was with healthcare for about nine years. I served in the CTO role for a little more than three years. I have led many interesting initiatives, includes, including the merger of the Department of Me Mental Health and the Department of Alcohol and Drug Program into the Department of Healthcare Services and the transformation of the Department of Healthcare Services to Klaus First. Tim, throughout my state career, I have been very lucky to have met many leaders who became my mentors. I appreciate that they believe in me and I value their tough love to, by providing direct and constructive feedbacks and guidance to shape me to who I am today and help me get to where I am today. That's great. You can't beat having good mentors. That's that's for sure. Speaking of uh, mentors and leadership, tell us a little bit about your leadership style. As an IT leader, I believe in people, processes, and technology in that order. We will not be successful without the strong support of our staff. Every day we rely on our workforce to execute our vision and carry out the work needed to reach our goals. We must invest in our staff and managers by giving them the appropriate training. Upscaling our technical team has been and will continue to be one of my top priority at Fiscal. I like to hire dedicated, skillful people, and I will do everything I can to retain talented staff members. In my experience, the technology is easier to manage when we have a strong, dedicated team with the right skills skill set. Another area that also very important to me is customer service. We exist because of our customers who has a need to use our technology, but so we must engage with our customer to understand their needs. We look to our customer to tell us how we can best serve them. Now, um, I also have heard that you've met with every single one of your uh, employees. Is that true? Yes, so this is my eighth week with Fiscal, and I have met with 103 IT staff so far, and I'm planning to finish my round with all IT staff by the end of this month. Wow, that's something. That's really cool. Um, how about looking forward to 2022? What do you have in store? A lot of exciting stuff. Um, moving into 2022, I will be focused on all the goal in our director, Miriam Ingenito's latest leadership message, strengthening our robust security, fine tuning our data management strategy and continuing our aggressive journey to the cloud. Let me share a little bit about each of these. On our first goal, leading our effort in IT security is Ken Ketever, our new Chief Information Security Officer, Ken is already hard at work along with our dedicated team in the Enterprise Security Services Office, aligning the Department Security Initiative and Goal with California recent announced Cal Secure Roadmap. We are assessing our technical team and working on a plan to expand cybersecurity training, not only to our technical staff, but to all our staff at Fiscal. We also are reviewing our existing security standards, 
and looking into a governance risk and compliance solution. Jim, as you can see, it is going to be a very exciting, fulfilling, and purposeful journey ahead of us for Fiscal. On our second goal, ITD will work closely with the Botty team who are leading, who are the lead for the department's data retention effort. This is a first step in fine tuning our data strategy effort. And lastly, on our third goal, late last year, we set out to mature our disaster recovery system in collaboration with AWS. The critical DR infrastructure was put in place in less than two months in the Amazon cloud. Over the upcoming months, we will be continue to enhance the DR solution, which will culminate with a full production operation test in the new DR environment. Tentatively, we are shooting for the third quarter of this year, calendar year. We also focus on investing in organization, organizational change management as we move to cloud. Just like I mentioned earlier, people, processes, and technology. Jim, I'm very excited and looking forward to my journey with Fiscal. I appreciate our director, Miriam Ingenitos, and our chief deputy director, Jenny McGuire, for the opportunity to serve as the Fiscal CIO now more than ever in these challenging times. My goal is to lead Fiscal not just to survive in the unpredictable IT advanced world, but to thrive, to transform how we do business to engage with our customer. We work to automate today and scale with tomorrow in mind. Well, thank you very much for all that great information. And once again, welcome to Fiscal. And I know uh, you have a lot ahead of you, but sounds to me like you're well equipped to uh, make all of that happen. And thank you so much again for joining us today on Fiscal TV. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. You bet. And thanks again to Toquin Collier for being here with us today. Now it's time for a pro procurement contract work center demo with the GITA NIMCAR. Uh, if you have any questions during this uh, work center demo, you can always uh, email your relations coordinator and they'll make sure you get your answer. Now, here's a GITA. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ajita Nimkar, and today we are going to talk about Procurement Contract Work Center. This Procurement Contract Work Center is a central page, just like all the work centers we discussed, from which buyers can efficiently view contract information and directly access the contracts to perform their daily tasks. As for each work center, each individual's user access determines the links available in this procurement contract work center. In addition, all other roles that have access to the contract will also be able to access the procurement contract work center to view the department data related to the contract. The procurement contract work center includes the following sections, my work, links, queries, reports, and processes. Now let's go ahead and click on my work centers tile. Once you click on this work centers, all the available work centers for you will be displayed. Let's go ahead and click on the procurement contract work center tile. As we discussed earlier, on the left panel, you can see the main sections, my work, links, queries, and reports and processes. Now let's go ahead and talk about the contract buyer dashboard. This is the landing page for the procurement contract work center. It contains transaction graphs specific to the individual buyer. This graph data is driven by the fiscal year entered at the top of the page. If there is no fiscal year entered, it will display all financial and year transactions. Now let's go ahead and try to search for the financial year 2020. Let's click on search. Once you search, as you can see, now you can view the data only for the financial year 2020. 
if we go ahead and blank this search and do the blank search, you will get all financial aid data for that particular contract buyer. Now let's move on further to this contract work center. As we can see, the column to the left, which is a my work section, which consists of my pending activities, buyer alerts, and department pending activities. In addition, within each of these category, there are links to the pages of commonly searched for information. The data on these pages are specific to each buyer. Now let's go ahead and click on my pending activities. As you can see, there are open contracts and pending approval data for this particular buyer. If the link is grayed out, that means there are no contracts to be shown in this category. So that means for this particular buyer, there are no denied contracts. The search functionality is the same for all the pages throughout the work center. The system searches for the word or selected value, and it will display any contract that has that value contained in the field. Now let's go ahead and click on open contracts. This displays all contracts which are in open status, including contracts which are open status due to a new version. So that means this particular contract is in the open section and this is in the current financial year and it is still not submitted for approval. Now let's go ahead and click on pending approval. As you can see in the search result, the contract status pending approval is grayed out because you are searching for pending contract approvals only. And you can see there is one contract for this particular buyer, which is in pending approval status. This denied contract links is grayed out. That represents there are no denied, denied contracts for this particular buyer. Now let's go ahead and click on buyer alerts. This provides a quick access to contracts that needs immediate assistance as they are running out of funds, expiring soon, or they have not yet been sourced to a PO. For these buyer alerts, we have the categories as approaching the contract maximum amount, contracts due for renewal, contracts expiring, on hold contracts modified by another buyer, escalation notices, and approved but not yet sourced to the PO. Now let's go ahead and click on approaching contract max amount. As you can see, this alert is generated because this displays that contract has below 10% of the max contract amount. And that is the reason why this contract ID is displayed over here. This means that buyer can go in and this requires immediate attention from this particular buyer. This buyer can directly go in and click on the view hyperlink or the edit hyperlink to make the changes to this contract. Let's note that these pages display the latest contract version when not expired, closed or contract status. So as you can see here, this contract only has version one and it displays the current version, which is version one. Now let's move further on the department pending activities. As you can see, the department pending activities provides quick access to contracts that are up for renewal, expired, expiring soon, and contracts that have not been sourced to a PO. We can see here that appro approaching contract max amount expired contracts, contracts due for renewal, contracts expiring, on hold contracts, and approved not sourced to the PO. These are the exact same searches as buyer alerts. However, now this will have the entire department's data for all the buyers. 
for this department pending activities. Now let's go ahead and see what is approaching contract max amount. So now this displays exactly the same as buyer alerts, the contracts below 10% of the maximum contract amount. This expired contract, it will display contracts that have expired within the last 60 days. So the department buyers can go in and take the appropriate action. Contracts due for renewal. This displays contracts within the renewal date of 60 days. Now department buyers will have 60 days to go ahead and take action on these type of contracts. Contracts which are expiring soon. This displays the contracts with, the, with an end date within 60 days. On hold contracts. On hold contracts link displays the contracts which are on hold status. That means they are not yet approved and not yet ready to source to be on the PO. Now let's click on approved not source to the PO. Now these are the contracts which displays that they have not yet been sourced or copied to a PO. These are all the contracts open for sourcing. Now let's go ahead and move further to the important links. This links section is comprised of three categories, procurement contracts, supplier or bidder, and important link. Now within each category, just I said earlier, there are links to pages of commonly searched information within Fiscal and external website. Now let's go ahead and click on the procurement contract section. This will provide buyers quick access to frequently used contracting pages. These links allow the user direct access to the pages without having to navigate using the main menu navigation. This will be a one-stop shop for all the buyers to navigate through Fiscal. They include Add Contract, LPA Department Contract Search, New Version Changes, Document Status, and so on. Now let's go ahead and click on LPA Department Contract Search. As you can see, the buyers are directly navigated to this LPA Departmental Contracts and they can go ahead and click and search for any particular contract they are looking for. Now let's go ahead and click on review contracts by PO. Again, as you can see, you do not have to navigate through main menu. You can quickly go ahead on the review contracts by PO page and search by the contract ID you want to search for. And similarly, the contract approval, create contract alert workflow, view current approvals, contract remaining balance, and contact change history. The buyers will not have to navigate through the main page. Now let's go ahead and click on supplier and bidder. The suppliers and bidders category gives the user direct access to the pages pertaining to the supplier and certification information. The main links include view certification details, add or update supplier, supplier update request form, maintain bidder, and search vendor or bidder. Now let's go ahead and see what view certification details do. So now here, the buyer can go ahead and search by the certification ID. These links will provide all the certification IDs which are available for this particular buyer for lookup. The similar way, buyer can also click on the supplier ID and search by supplier ID. This particular section is definitely taking more time as you can see that there are many suppliers which are existed in the system will be available here for the buyer to search. Now let's go ahead and click on the important link section. This important link connect the user to the important internal pages and external websites for easier transacting. This important link section includes my profile, 
DGSPD website, job aids, help, contract buyer dashboard, department dashboard, skipper search, Cali procure and review PO page. Now let's go ahead and click on DGSPD website. As you can see, there will be a pop-up window which will take you directly to the DGS Procurement Division website. Now let's go back. Now let's go ahead and click on the department dashboard. Now you can see that department dashboard is displayed. This also displays the contracting data for all financial year. If you want to search for particular fiscal year, the same way we search for the buyer dashboard, we can search for department dashboard. Now it will only display for fiscal year 2020. If you blank this field out and do the blank search, again, it will display all financial year transactions. Please note that the procurement contract work center dashboard gives the user access to view contract information at the departmental level. Now let's go ahead and move on to the query section. These query section gives the user direct access to the frequently used contract queries. They include, as of now, only two queries, list of procurement contracts and contract aging report. Once you click on these links, as you can see, you can directly navigate to this report. You can directly enter the business unit and from and to date and click on view results. You do not have to go to the query viewer page to go ahead and run this query. You can directly run the queries from procurement contract work center. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about reports and processes. This section consists of two sections, procurement contracts and car reports. The procurement contracts, this reports includes activities report, contract expiration, data extract, internal order contracts, master contracts for recurring vouchers, non-contracted items, recurring voucher contracts, contract PO inquiry, and Spiley's report. Now, as for an example, let's go ahead and click on activities report. As you can see, you are directly routed to contract activities report. You can search for the existing value or you can add a new value and to create a new run control ID and run this report. All of these reports can be run through this work center. Now let's go ahead and click on the car reports. As of now, we have one report which gives a direct access to the contract buyers to OSDS form 810 report page. Let's go ahead and click on this page. Now, as you can see, similarly for just like all the reports, buyers can directly click here and create a new current control ID or use any previous run control ID to run this OSDS form 810 report. Now this concludes our procurement contract work center. Please let me know if you have any questions or send your inquiries to Fiscal Service Center. Thank you. Ajita, thanks again for sharing that uh, demo with us. And as Ajita said, if you have any questions, you can send them to the Fiscal Service Center, and you can also always send a question to your relations coordinator, and they will get your answers for you. Now it's time to welcome back our old buddy, David Symbol. David, it's great to have you back. How have you been? Thank you, Jim, for inviting the FSC to this week's Fiscal TV. Uh, I've been good. The FSC has some tips and tricks that are good reminders to share periodically with our customers. We'd like to start this segment with secondary user IDs. The FSC continues to receive requests for assistance from department users with locked secondary user accounts because the secondary user ID does not have a valid email associated with it. And can you explain why a secondary user ID may be needed when transacting in Fiscal and why it needs a valid email address? Sure, Jim. 
Sometimes a Fiscal end user will need to set up a secondary user account in addition to the one they normally use to conduct business in the Fiscal system. While there are a variety of reasons as to why you may need a secondary account, the one thing that is required no matter how many accounts an end user has is a valid email address for each of your Fiscal account IDs. If you do need a secondary user account, the email you list for that account has to be a valid working email address set up to receive emails so that you receive important notices related to that account, such as account inactivity notifications. Fiscal sends notifications to users who have not logged in for 90 days, warning them that their account will be locked and disabled after 180 days of inactivity. Not receiving those notifications could cause your account to be disabled and locked. Additionally, emails for secondary user IDs need to be valid for you to use the forgot my password functionality. A valid email address allows you to receive a code to access Fiscal production, even if you have locked yourself out. Whether you have one user account or two, you can initiate the forgot my password as previously discussed. If the email address is not set up to receive emails, you will not be able to reset your password without assistance from an FSC analyst. Being able to reset your password on your own allows you to access Fiscal production outside of FSC support hours. We recommend that you contact your internal IT department to ensure that your secondary user account is set up to receive emails. If you have any questions about how Fiscal uses secondary user IDs, please contact the Fiscal Service Center by calling us at 1-855-347-2200 or you can email us at fiscalservicecenter at fiscal.ca.gov. FSC analysts are available Monday through Friday from 7.30 to 5.30. That's great, David. I know the uh, secondary ID, been hearing a lot about that lately, so thanks for sharing that. How about a little info about the ServiceNow self-service portal? Yes, definitely. The FSC encourages customers to submit their tickets via the ServiceNow self-service portal. The self-service portal streamlines the ticketing process by auto-assigning to the correct module at ticket submission. This bypasses the first in, first out ticket creation process through the FSC email. The self-service portal allows for pictures and screenshots to be easily added to the case by simply dragging and dropping them into the portal from your desktop. The self-service portal also allows users to add anyone from the statewide user list to the watch list on a ticket for monitoring and awareness. Inside the self-service portal, users can see the estimated time of completion, displaying the target date of ticket resolution. When the analyst provides issue resolution and inputs that date, the user can also access the full knowledge base that contains all job aids and forms in one central location. By introducing the new self-service feature, we intend to increase the amount of surveys that users fill out. The feedback we receive from our users will assist in implementing changes, which will allow us to better serve all users of our system. The new self-service portal will also include an announcements banner that will be updated with information on scheduled system maintenance and other announcements. Finally, the department dashboard provides department-wide ticket drill-down capabilities, as well as interactive charts and graphs. Please note that the dashboard is available to departmental authorities and designees, also known as DADS. However, DADS can also request access for additional staff by submitting a ticket through the self-service portal or emailing the FSC at Fiscal Service Center at fiscal.ca.gov. We hope that this new tool will improve your Fiscal experience. Okay, now let's move on to the self-service password reset. Yes, this is also where having a valid email for secondary user accounts comes into play. The self-service feature gives you the ability to reset your own password even if your account is locked. Navigate to the Access Fiscal homepage. After entering your email address, on the next screen, select the Forgot My Password link. The system will generate and email you an OTP code, also known as a one-time password. Once you enter the code, the system will prompt you to update your password. You do not have to wait for assistance from an FSC analyst to get back to business. That's some good information there, as always. 
OK, let's uh, close out with the identity self service portal. Sure thing. The FISCAL's identity self service portal is available to departmental authorities and designees, also known as DADS, for faster end user role provisioning. DADS and designees have greater control over access requests they submit. Using the portal, DADS can view the department and users and their roles in the FISCAL system. They can also use the portal to track requests that have been submitted or approved. DADS can access the Identity Self-Service Portal by using the FISCAL user ID and password on the self-service login page. Before using the portal, DADS should review the job aids located on the FISCAL website. For additional questions regarding the Identity Self-Service Portal, please email our Information Security Office and their email address is fiscal.iso at fiscal.ca.gov. Well, David, thanks again for being with us. We always uh, appreciate your information. And of course, it's great information for all the Fiscal users out there. So it's good to see you again. It's been a little while since you've been with us. Thanks for joining us. Always a pleasure to be here, Jim. And that's our show for today. Special thanks to David Symbol, who was just with us, of course, Toquin Collier and Ajita Nimkar. If you would like to see this, or any of our Fiscal TV shows, you can find them on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to let your colleagues know about us. And from everyone here at Fiscal TV, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in March. You've been watching Fiscal TV. To view this and other episodes of Fiscal TV, please subscribe and follow our YouTube channel.